Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast. As always, please subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Amazon, CastBox, Satchel Podcast Player, and iHeartRadio. Uh, please add us on Facebook, the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast, Instagram, Jason Benicki Experience, and you can always add me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at J-A-S-O-N-B-A-N-I-C-K-I. Uh, if you had been enjoying the daily episodes, I think you've noticed I only did a few of those and then kind of scrapped that. i uh, going to get one out th- this week, so it's about a week between episodes roughly, uh, and try to get another one out next week before I pack up and move. Uh, I kind of liked doing the shorter episodes, uh, but I decided it kind of got a po- away from what I was trying to do, uh, which was make this just more general and in scope and do whatever I felt like and talk about whatever I felt like. And I felt like when I was doing the short episodes, it was always going to be either a quick political rant or take or a quick sports political rant or take. And then there would have been no point in changing it from the last name of the podcast. So uh, I kind of am going to go back to more traditional format, uh, not necessarily worrying about time constraints one way or the other, uh, but just trying to get out one or two episodes a week, uh, see how I feel about that, doing that, see if I can keep that up. We all know that that's not a consistent thing for me at all, uh, but we'll keep trying it out. Uh, So thanks again for everybody who downloads. Uh, Like I said, numbers are doing okay. I took a little hit when I took like three weeks off because I was upset at work. Uh, And right now I'm just kind of in the middle of packing up most of my apartment here in Charlotte after a a brief seven-month stay. This is going to kind of be my last weekend here. And then on Friday, I'll pack up my moving truck and Head back to the ye old Midwest where it'll be 40 freaking degrees out and then maybe 30s overnight. And I'm like, fuck me. This is what happens when rich assholes want to be richer. I No other way to put it. I didn't do anything to lose my job. I didn't do anything bad. The four months that I was here that I was directly responsible for the appliance department, we grew sales 25% from the year before. I uh, did two million versus one point six. What more can you ask for? Four hundred thousand dollars in additional sales in four months. Not a small accomplishment, yet not enough for me to keep my job. So I can say this with all due respect, and by that I mean it none. Fuck you, Robert Niblock, and the goat smelly goat that fucks you in your ass every night. Makes you such a cantankerous, lazy asshole of a CEO. I don't feel bad about that. That's gonna stay in there. Uh, I've only got four more shifts left to work if they want to fire me. Granted, none of them listen to my podcast, but fuck them, too. Anyways, uh, like I said, it's it's a little uh, disheartening to back up all your stuff and realize like it fits in like eight totes. (laughs) And you're like, oh, that's, that's really all I own in the world. That's it. And a bunch of bullshit furniture that I bought at Walmart that I'm going to pack up in this truck. And my nice couch and my okay bed. And then it's like, oh, hey, that's that's everything. Awesome. Glad glad we did this. This, this is going to be great. Just great. Uh, you know, going to take not take much effort to move it all. Uh, but again, shout out to Brad Hess for helping me uh, pack up the truck next Thursday night. Really do appreciate all that help I can get. Uh, you, you never know who you can count on. Uh, but but I, I definitely... We'll take a, a lesson to heart from, from this move and apply it to wherever I end up next after I go home to regroup for a little bit. Uh, don't move somewhere based off of the way it was five or six years ago. I really liked Charlotte as a city five or six years ago. It has changed drastically and not in a positive way, in my opinion. Uh, it's become every millennial douchey thing I can think of, and it's just awful. It's an awful experience if you're just past that millennial age cut off like I am. I am a solid Gen Xer. I don't apologize for that in any way, shape, or form. And I own who I am. And I missed, you know, when I used to come down here, there were some great neighborhood bars, great places to go hang out, great people to hang out with. And it's like the influx of uh, northern and midwestern millennials that have moved here have just douched this place out. Sorry there. Needed a drink of my vodka and Sprite 
Because after all, if you're packing up all your worldly belongings into like eight totes, uh, I think you're entitled to drink a drink or two in the process or or whatever that number may be. Uh, however, um, where was I? Oh, you know, Charlotte's one of these new modern hip millennial cities. And by that, I mean every bar has 30 fucking craft beers on tap. They're like $8 a piece that s- are, are just another fucking beer. Uh, they're packed to the gills with people all talking about nonsense, but not talking to anybody new. Uh, you know, I was lucky enough to, to come of age uh, at a time when bars were still neighborhood bars, and they were great. Uh, before, cell phones were predominant, so people weren't on them all the time at the bar. Uh, and also where camera phones and video wasn't taken all the time. So people just actually sat and talked to people and met the experience. Uh, it, and, uh, when one of my, when our, co- when our, when my buddy Aaron, college roommate of, of mine and Brad's came down, uh, Aaron kind of saw it a very similar way. And, and, you know, Brad interjects that, you know, I just want to be at, at, at some bar where it's just regulars who are just regulars and they don't like new people and I'm, and I'm just thinking to myself I don't want to school the kid because he doesn't want to hear it he really doesn't I've tried to explain it to him a hundred times regulars at a bar do not really keep to themselves you know if there's somebody who's being a douchey asshole or just an asshole in general or a fucking cunt if they're going to be a cunt uh, you know we regulate that shit don't get me wrong we don't want to deal with those people however regulars at a bar want to talk to as many new people as they can. They're regulars at a bar because it's a nice place. They've got to know the staff. It's a really chill. They do have friends that come down there all the time and you hang out with your friends and that's cool too. But there's nice where your friends aren't there or where there's one or two new people total in the bar. You're like, hey, you know, you guys want to hang out with us? Sit down, have some drinks, talk some bullshit, tell some stories, watch the game, go play some darts or pool, you know? It's a welcoming environment. It's, it's again, as I've said before in previous podcasts, it's one of those environments where you kind of, I've been lucky enough to meet and maintain friendships with people for 15 years now. And, and there are some that I haven't done as good a job keeping in contact with and I'm going to reach out to one of the guys over this weekend and, and try and catch back up with him after a few years. Uh, you know, I think we all get a little lazy with Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, but like I said, you know, Charlotte lacks that neighborhood bar anymore. That everything's, you know, either a, a live venue for entertainment of some sort, which is cool. You got to have those, or just like a brew pub or some place. Like I miss bars with five different beers on tap, uh, good drinks, good bartenders that could slang you a drink, uh, and weren't trying to sell you up on the latest god awful trend in alcohol or you know the the fifty dollar bottle of wine that's going to taste the same as a ten dollar bottle of wine and any sommelier out there who wants to challenge me i will put you to the same blind taste test that multiple studies have done and proven you guys are full of shit uh and you know t- to be honest uh helping out at a, a beer tasting kind of festival type thing uh proved to me that that most of these people who who do this craft brewery thing and and the people who sell it just talk out of their ass. I mean, literally within an hour, half hour of being there, I had uh, me and Aaron had a section of like a dozen beers in front of us that both of us could pick up on. Okay, what kind of beer do you normally like? What do you normally drink? And we could recommend a beer based off of that out of the dozen we had in front of the two of us. And we were hitting home runs probably 90% of the time. You know, just boom, 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 real quick, you know, because at the end of the day, sales is all just being able to read a person, meet their needs, get it to them. Whether you're selling alcohol, whether you're selling cars, whether you're selling houses, whether you're selling appliances, doesn't matter. And again, with Charlotte's population exploding, it it just, it, it has encapsulated this millennium trend, millennial trend of just awfulness in bars like they don't get it they'll never get it they're missing out on an earth earth erstwhile experience and i'm guaranteeing you i'm using that that word wrong but a worthwhile experience of meeting friends that you'll have for the rest of your life at your neighborhood bar and i know it's not for everybody and i know it's not everybody's thing 
But that's one of the things that I would I would have enjoyed the most when I was down here that just doesn't exist. Not that real consistent neighborhood bar. You know, there's there's a nice place around the corner for me. Still not really a neighborhood bar. Uh, you know, there. But but like I said, I used to come down here all the time, and just up the road from where I'm at was a great neighborhood bar when I used to come down here. And every time I'd come down here, I'd visit it. Uh, mainly because it was right by UNCC campus, and that's where my cousin went to school, and her boyfriend lived right over there. And I could walk to it when I was staying with him. So that way, if I wanted to drink and drink some a bunch, I could walk right back. Uh, you know, there's cool things in Charlotte, too. You know, hard to doubt the epicenter. It'll always be the place where I was when the Cubs won the World Series. And, and again, it, even if it was just for a short period of time, at, at seven, seven and a half months, whatever it's been now, give or take a little, uh, you know, it'll always been a place I lived even for, for just a little while. It'll always been a place that I called home for, for a short period of time. But what I've learned is make sure before you move that you visited that city sometime recently, that you don't just, hey, you know, I used to go there and it used to be cool. It was really fun. And then you come down and, and you're really there permanently and it's just like, this isn't cool anymore. I haven't been here in a while. This kind of sucks. Um, not really happy about this. Uh, you know, again, I would have liked to stay it over, go back to Midwest winters. Uh, but again, this gave me a chance to regroup, look at some new places, look at some old places I was looking at. Again, Nashville is always going to be a place I go every six months to once a year, visit my buddy Ethan. I went to college with down there. Hasn't been on the podcast a while, but give him a shout out. Going to be down there in about three weeks to see him. Make sure to take my equipment. We'll bang out one podcast this time while I'm down there. That's for sure. Get him, get him off the phone and onto the microphones and have a, have a fun experience with that. Uh, but like I said, you know, this is just a chance to, to go back and regroup and see what I want to do and see what I'm doing and see where I want to go with it and, and plan a little better. You know, I've reached out to some people about, you know, every time I think that I don't want to do retail anymore, I, I realize it's not that I don't want to do retail. It's that I don't want to do the big box, big format like a Lowe's or I don't want to go to a Home Depot that I would really like to do something like I've been talking with recruiters from Best Buy about going there and doing either running their appliance departments or being a, you know, a high paid, highly compensated salesperson within their departments. Uh, and that's something I would enjoy where you're not expected to run from appliances to, you know, lumber to outside garden to where, you know, where everything's so different and you're expected to help in all these different areas. It's like, I don't know any of this stuff. Like I, I know a fairly decent amount of stuff inside of a low store or inside of a home retail place. And that makes me more the exception than the rule, unfortunately. Uh, but it's just not a fun experience when people just think that it's your responsibility to be able to know everything. It's just like, I don't go to your place for a meeting with the marketing department and they're busy, so I just grab somebody out of the accounting department and be like, oh, hey, guys, you know, great to see you. Can you help me with my marketing problem? I know you're accounting, but you should be able to help me with my marketing problem. Uh, somehow that wouldn't be even remotely thought of as acceptable. But in the world of big box retail, that's the expectation that if I'm in appliances, I should know plumbing. I don't know jack shit about plumbing. Four plus years of working at Lowe's, I still don't know jack shit about plumbing. I can tell you three things about plumbing. You want it to roll downhill, and if you want my advice on it, it's either going to leak a little or leak a lot. Sorry, right, those are the rules. I don't know anything about it. I can tell you how to lay tile, how to do uh, lay hardwood, engineered wood, laminate, uh, you know, how to hook up all your different appliances, how to install a door, how to install a window, all of those things. Can't tell you jack shit about plumbing. Can't tell you anything about flowers or any of the stuff we sell in the outside garden area. Mulch is mulch to me, but there's apparently a bunch of different kinds and it does a bunch of different things. And I'm just like, sorry, it's mulch. If you want it, we got it. If it's not what you want, sorry. I don't know what to tell you. And people just look at you like, you're the dumb one for not knowing. Like, well, you work here. How do you not know this? Uh, well, dumb ass. Like I said before in my previous analogy, and in my last four days here, I may go off on some of these people, by the way. That may be the most entertaining thing to come down the road from this, is that I finally go off on these people. Look, motherfucker, I don't come to your marketing firm and bump into somebody from the accounting department and be like, hey, you, can you help me with this marketing 
problem I'm here for. I know the marketing department is busy right now, but you work in the building, so you should be able to help, right? No, people don't expect that anywhere else. Why do people expect that in big box retail? And I can't wait to get out of it. Like, I really enjoy helping people find the right appliance for them, find the right flooring for them, and make sure that they get the right thing, the right product, the right stuff, everything they need, first time done, over, and if it's not right, let's make it right for them. You know, I I definitely want to help make those things work for people. But with that said, my expertise lays in a few key areas, and I don't feel like dealing with any of that other bullshit. And, you know, big box retail doesn't want to pay enough employees to actually maintain all their areas. They want people to, they expect people to be able to help other places, but they don't want to train people to help other places. And again, like I said, not a person who's ever going to be able to figure out plumbing or hydrangeas, okay? That's just who I am. Well, I'm going to just be honest with you. Don't give a shit. Don't want to give a shit. No, no desire to learn. So I'm never going to learn. Always going to be a person who lives in a condo or a townhouse or an apartment, someplace where somebody else is responsible for handling all of that shit. Because that's how little I want to deal with it. Rest of my life, don't care. Somebody else's problem, not mine. So anyways, back to my key point. Ready to move on. I'm really ready for this last week to go. I almost was just tempted to turn my stuff in today and be done with work. I was really that ready. So I could just really focus on packing. Relax a little before I get home. Because once I get home, I've just got a couple days to unpack, get ready. And I've got to start hitting Uber and Lyft like hard core to get ready for you know till i get a job because i still gotta make some money gotta have a paycheck gotta pay them bills you know it's amazing you know sally may ain't gonna listen to me like sorry i lost my job because my boss needed the stock to go up two dollars a share so you could make 32 million dollars selling half of his shares this year hashtag ceo sucks ass problems fuck off uh but <laughs> Anyways, I, d- I don't want to belabor this too long, but that's kind of where I'm at this week. I'm just kind of getting everything packed up, kind of eating most of my stuff on the run now because I've got what to get get the last of the little bit of food I have here finished and then wash the rest of my dishes over the next day or two and get them all packed away. So I'm really just down to the few things I need in the, the bathroom and the clothes on my back to get me through till it's time to pack up and move. I'll probably leave one TV hooked up, my PS4, and my game, my three whole games I own for my PS4. Really, really kind of amazing. I saw, you know, I have my original Nintendo in my box full of like 40 games. And then it seems like every system I get, I just have less and less games down to where I've got three games for my PS4. Baseball, basketball, football, and I have NASCAR downloaded on the system. And the only other game I want to get is GTA Five because what's what's the purpose of owning a video game system if I can't carjack people, uh, sleep with hookers, then run them over and get my money back? I'm just saying, life is hollow and meaningless and empty without that. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> kind of beat that point to the week. Uh, all things considered. Uh, it was a quiet week in the world of politics. You know, there's a little of extraneous noise with Flynn seeking immunity. There's no surprise in that. I don't know why anybody's reading anything into that at all. I mean, you always have the the regular tweets from Trump. I'm again going to try and ignore those. I don't want to belabor on that too much on this episode. Uh, but we did get to see the Bulls on TNT Street go to 20 games this week. Uh, take down the Cleveland Cavaliers on Thursday night. Uh, I'm recording this Friday night, trying to get it up just before the end of the month. So that was kind of exciting, kind of cool. Uh, very, very excited about the fact that the Bulls are you know, going to somehow hang on right around the eighth seed of the playoffs and sneak right back in again and uh, essentially be meaningless and get bounced out in five games in the first round. Woohoo! Let's all book our tickets for that one. So excited. Uh, did finish the season 4-0. With a sweep, season sweep of the Cavs, but that's not going to matter. Come playoffs, the Cavs will trounce them 100% of the time. Like I said, probably five games. Bulls could probably steal one at home. Same against the Celtics. They could probably steal one at home. That's that's the most they could hope for. Uh, so I can't even be too excited about that. But this is Friday night, 10 p.m., less than 48 hours away from 
opening day of the baseball season. Uh, like I said, I wanted to get a baseball preview episode out with somebody. I am really going to try and hammer home Ethan tomorrow to get one recorded. I want one recorded baseball preseason prediction episode just because I'm so excited about the first season in my lifetime. And pretty much everybody who could be out there living, breathing right now, first time in their lifetime that the Cubs are defending World Series champions going into a season. Let me repeat that for emphasis for those of you out there listening who may not know, may have been in a coma for the last five, six months, or may not understand. We are going into the first season in 108 years where the Chicago Cubs are the defending World Series champions and get to open up the baseball season Sunday night on ESPN, where I'll have to be out at a bar to watch it because I don't have ESPN at home. Uh, I guess I could stream it on an app, but thank you to all my family members who give me passwords so I can watch sports on uh, my Fire Stick because I sure as hell ain't paying for cable. That's just a giant ripoff anymore. More and more money for less and less channels, or you get loaded up with channels that nobody cares about. Sorry about that. Had to get another drink. Apologize for that elongated break in there. Uh, other than that, like I said, it was kind of a. It, it's been a quiet rundown at, at, at work for me. I've been just kind of there. I haven't been putting in much effort. I don't know how the rest of you handle leaving a company that's basic that's giving you the boot, but you know, giving us a notice ahead of time on when they're letting us go wasn't really the smartest idea because there was no way I was putting maximum effort in down the stretch. And it's just like, uh, what did you expect from me? You know, I'm not going to give 100% effort 100% of the time down the stretch here. Uh, you know, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to keep the doors open. I'm going to take care of customers when they come in. That's what I'm going to do. But I ain't doing any of the extra work. I ain't running to help neighboring departments at this point. I ain't flying around to teach people new things anymore. That's one of the things I did the best when I was there was help teach people new things. And I, I mean, I still help people even today g- learn some new information, but it's, I'm not going to stretch myself to do it. I'm not going to go out of my way to learn it or to help them learn it. You know, I've done my part. I've done my time. You decided my skill set wasn't good enough. All right. <laughs> like I said, it's pretty bland week at work, uh, but I do want to turn this like I said, there were times where I just want this to be more of what I talk about, what just what's going on in my world and where I'm at. And uh, like I said, I'll finish packing up this weekend, have basically the clothes on my back and the regular shower stuff and the shower curtain, of course, to uh, take home and put up. And like I said, a TV and the PS4 uh, this week to get packed up and then move home on Friday. And then middle of the week next week, I get to go see Eric fucking Church live because my cousin had extra tickets and hooked me up with some fat seats. Can't wait to see that. Three plus hours, Eric Church rocking out on the stage. Then about 10 days later, I'm down to Nashville to visit Ethan. I'm going to have to be really hammered out some Ubers to pay Uber and Lyft trips when I get home to pay for all this because I'm spending the last of my paychecks from work as we speak to get all these tickets bought. But hey, that's the purpose of living life. Can't wait to get down to Nashville, you know, get a Burt Kreischer call in sick to work show, get a, go see at least one taping of Ari Shafir's This Is Not Happening Live, go see Burt do stand up with friends on a regular show, going to go see Josh Wolf's Fairly Normal podcast taping live. So excited about this. I can't wait to get that weekend in. It's going to cost me a ton of money. You know what? Worth it every time. So I feel like I'm going to wrap this up at, I don't know, maybe a half hour here is is where I did. And maybe this will be kind of more close to normal, uh, you know, if I, I don't get too lost or too ranty or too ravey. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I wanted to get an episode out this week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, checking it out. Once again, this is the Jason Minicky Experience Podcast. Uh, please subscribe, rate, review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Amazon, CastBox, Satchel Podcast Player, iHeartRadio. Your ratings would be appreciated. Reviews would be appreciated. You know, yell at me for changing my mind a hundred thousand times. Welcome to the world of ADHD that is my brain and my creative thought process. Oh, you know what? I know one other thing I wanted to talk about this week that really had me upset before I go. So that'll be a small blip in the middle. That's not a true ending. Patreon. 
I know people who are listening to my podcast, the 20 or 30 of you who listen to my podcast every week religiously, definitely listen to other podcasts. I'm sure you know, have heard of what pay, of Patreon, know what Patreon does. Uh, it's a great tool for podcasters who, who have built an audience and are reaching out to them to help you know raise funds for their podcast, help pay for their podcast, uh, help make money make, doing their podcast. Uh, I think it's a great tool for the creative people in this world. It should be a way to reward creative people. However, what's really driving me up a wall this week is seeing some of these Instagram models post their Patreon accounts where you can buy even more exclusive photos. Like, why not just have a regular website? Patreon's for a very specific thing. It's for the creative arts. If you're just pretty in a picture, put up a website with your name on it, blah, 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 dot com. And sell the pictures on there. You know, hey, if you want to see behind the scenes of my latest shoot, $15. And you'll get all the behind the scenes of my shoot or whatever it is that you would put on Patreon. Just don't water down what Patreon is and what it's meant for. And take money that could be going to people who need it, who deserve it, who have earned it through their creativity, through their hard work, through through their efforts, through through the content that they've created for people. Let them get those dollars. You know, I'm not saying that Patreon is a limited pool, but there are only so many uh, dollars in Patreon to go around. I'm not sure why my Siri fired up there. Hopefully the audio didn't pick up on that, <laughs> but you'll have that. But again, leave, leave Patreon for, for the podcasters and the artists and the other people who, who are creating art and creating content. Uh, if you want to be an Instagram model, that's cool. Be an Instagram model, hope some advertisers see you, and then create a website that you can sell your stuff on. Don't take it away from those who need it. Hopefully someday I'll have a big enough following that I can have a Patreon account. Uh, I mean, I guess technically anybody can, but I'm not going to until I feel like I've created enough content. And on that note, I'm going to give a couple of shout-outs before I go off the air this week. Uh, again, if you're listening to me, I'm not your only podcast stop, so check. I'm going to give you a, my my five podcasts that everybody should be listening to right now. Uh, first and foremost, the Full Charge Power Hour. If you're not listening to the Full Charge Power Hour already, do yourself a favor, check it out. You'll love it. It's funny. It comes out every Sunday night. He's really, they're really good at getting their episodes out every week. Everybody will laugh. Everybody will love it. Second one. Uh, this one catches me on, caught me off guard when I first listened to it. Didn't know it was out right away. Uh, but had heard, uh, Freddie Prince as a guest on the Christopher Titus podcast. And then he talked about his podcast, Prince and the Wolf, Freddie Prince Jr., Josh Wolf. Uh, it's entertaining as hell. It's fairly new, 15 episodes roughly, give or take. So you can catch up on all the backlog, get right up to date with all their stuff, get in, get in while it's new. You'll love it. You'll thank me for it. Again, Full Charge Power Hour, Prince and the Wolf. Those are the first two. Uh, I can't say enough about the Burt cast. Uh, you guys always hear me. I'm sure if you've talked to me at all in real life or have ever heard anything from me, you hear me talk about Burt Kreischer all the time. Uh, I've shown everybody in the world that I know the machine story. I uh, can't help it. Love it. Check it out. Gonna Everybody will love it. Uh, one last, uh, bridge kind of, I guess I can call it sports, can call it comedy, whatever you want to call it podcast, punch truck sports, Tebow and Sam Tripoli killing it out there fighting Andy when she shows up. Great. Uh, Ari, when he comes back from sleeping with little boys in, uh, Bangkok, I'd be more than happy to show his belt buckle to everybody. And of course, Aaron there always hoping they would talk about baseball more with Al Madrigal from All Things Comedy complaining that they are just not family friendly enough to get them much marketing. So there's the first four. You've got the Full Charge Power. Great podcast. One of my favorites all time. Four years going. Love it. It's great. Been listening to Matt Full, Full Charon on podcast going back even farther to some of his old adventures. Prince and the Wolf. Freddie Prince Jr. Josh Wolf. Book it. It's entertaining as hell. You'll love it. Thank me later. Third, 
Burt Cast, Burt Kreischer, one of the funniest stand-up comedians working today. Hardest touring comedians in the past year. He's killing it. His new special, The Machine, on Showtime. If you get a chance, stream it. You'll love it. Thank me later. Punch Drunk Sports, Jason Tebow, Sam Tripoli, Ari Shafir when he's not running around the globe hiding from, from bookies that he owes money, apparently. I don't know what his deal is right now. But he's hiding. Great sports slash comedy podcast. Uh, they've been having a lot of guests lately. It's entertaining. You know, they have Steve Renazizi on there every once in a while. He does crazy things. They have a lot of people on there, but anyways, book it down. Entertaining. Every Tuesday they record it live. You can watch it on YouTube or it comes out on uh, typically Wednesday mornings on the podcast. Uh, fantastic. Then I'm going to throw the oddball in here for you. I'm going to throw one of my favorite political ones, Vox's The Weeds. This is a very policy-focused podcast. If you're somebody who likes the minutia of government and policy discussions, this is a great podcast with uh, Ezra Klein and Sarah Clifton and uh, Matt. Oh, for Christ's sake. I can't think of Matt's last name right now. Uh, but you're going to have all three of those on there usually almost every week talking about some new policy. Uh, you know, some trying to as common folk get up for you. So again, check them out. Full Charge Power Hour, Burt Cast, Prince and the Wolf, Punch Drunk Sports, Vox is the Weeds. you love them. I know I probably shouldn't be repping other people's podcasts, but I think that's what we need to do more of. We're not competing against each other. We should all be trying to grow each other's sphere of influences and get some more crossover marketing and promotion. So again, Jason Medicke Experience Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Satchel uh, Podcast Player, iHeartRadio. Subscribe, rate, review, share with your friends. You know, it's on Twitter. It's on uh, my on the Facebook pages. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel, J-A-S-O-N-B-A-N-I-C-K-I, spaced out, Jason Benicki. Boom. Add me on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, J-A-S-O-N-B-A-N-I-C-K-I. Would appreciate it. Say, send me a tweet saying, hey, heard the podcast, following you up, I'll follow you right back. Boom. Be a good deal for everybody. Add us on Facebook, the Jason Benicki Experience Podcast. That's our fan page. Feel free to message me on there, post on there anytime. Nobody ever does. Only thing that's on there is just a running tabulations of the podcast going back forever and ever. Uh, add us on Instagram. I'm still not very active on there. Jason Benicki Experience. Add it. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the love. Uh, as And thanks for tuning in. Peace.